The field cast, they have fought long and hard to establish themselves and yet they have once again been thrown in a pit of disdain. But they are not going to give up. Women of Afghanistan left their homeland with tears rolling down with a promise to return and come back and reclaim what is rightfully theirs. Here's their story in their voices. I can't, I can't express my feeling. It's a feeling of joy, it's a feeling of sorrow as well. She's happy because after sleepless nights and surviving a stampede among failed attempts to enter Kabul airport for evacuation, she and her family found their way to safety in a foreign land as they became another set of Afghan refugees. I feel happy that um, I saved my, my own life, my family life and we just uh, feel safe. But um, in, in, state, um, in this uh, on the other side, I just feel also sad. Since uh, um, recently, I have just left my, my homeland, the, the where which I was born, which I grew in. <laughs> it is not easy, but, but let's hope for the best, for home, our homeland as well. Sorry for this. Till a few days ago, she was an activist with an Italian NGO working for women's rights in her homeland, Afghanistan. But as soon as Kabul fell to the Taliban, she decided to leave her home with her family. But mommy, mommy. They were to be evacuated by the NGO in coordination with the Italian embassy. But for three days, she failed as she unsuccessfully tried to enter the Hamid Karzai International Airport. I'm talking on behalf of all the women who wants to have flight from Hamid Karzai airport, but they can't enter to the airport due to too much crowded. The situation is too terrible here. We are here confused, tired and hopeless. There is no safe way in which we can enter to the airport. Um, I heartfully request the Italian government to support us and to provide us uh, um, with, with a safe passage in which we could enter to the airport safely. <laughs> A deadly stampede followed right after this video message was recorded. She survived. The NGO invented an emergency protocol dubbed Operation Red Handkerchiefs. They formed WhatsApp groups made up of Afghan staffers, translators and Italian staff. Information on Taliban checkpoints, open airport gates and smartphone geolocation of people to be evacuated were shared and each group leader was asked to wear a red handkerchief on their wrist to be recognized. Evacuees met very early in the morning. They formed a very compact group in order to stay together in the queue and so once they recognized the person with the red handkerchief, it was easy to extract the entire group rapidly. She returned to the airport for a fourth time to help the Italian military police recognize and evacuate people with red handkerchiefs tied around their wrists. As I mentioned, there are lots of crowded, there are too many people who are there. In order to be recognized, we just, uh, uh, it, was, it was like a um, password to us that all of people who is related to uh, this NGO and who is related to Idlib, so they should uh, ban a scarf, a red scarf on their arms so that uh, people, the armies which is uh, there for escorting us, they can recognize us. So we were there, um, it, it, it really worked, it really helped us. When we see, I, I personally, when I see the uh, Italian armies, so I climbed to the, it was a pool, I climbed to the pool and uh, raised my hand with that uh, red um, scarf and also with flag of Italy in my hand. I just raised it down and mentioned that we are related to Italy, please help us, we are, we are still here. So this helped us to be recognized. And as she was evacuated, arriving in Rome on 23rd August with the three sisters and two brothers, away from the terror of their homeland to build a new home in the safety of a land where the Taliban cannot hurt them. Five of the nine-member robotics team of Afghanistan arrived in Mexico on 24th August. The bright young girls who were once celebrated as the trophy symbols of girl education in Afghanistan are now refugees on a foreign shore. But we will be united forever to have by your health you will have our achievements. 
pero la causa humana, la protección de los valores y las causas que nos identifican a las de los mexicanos hoy, pues han hecho que nos comprometamos para que ellas estén en México. Just four years back, they made headlines across the world when they participated in the first World Robo Olympiad in the US in 2017. The then US president's daughter Ivanka Trump met them to encourage them further. Recently, they had been on a life-saving mission to build a ventilator from used car parts and help their war-stricken country battle the coronavirus pandemic. But as Taliban took over the reins of Afghanistan, they had to leave. The girls, aged 15 to 18, were evacuated to Doha and then to Mexico. When we came from Afghanistan, it was a most of our circumstance for us and we left our family. I'm so sorry. No, take your time. <laughs> and it was so hard for us because um, our family there and um, and our country destroyed. Well, we really thought that we have to go because we didn't have any other choice because uh, serving our country is just by edu getting educated. So you are under protection of the Mexican law. Four of their team members are still waiting to be evacuated from Herat. A former Afghan policewoman, Khatera Hashmi, is a worried mother. She had to leave her children behind to give birth to her unborn child safely in a different country. Because she needed to recover from a brutal attack on her by the Taliban. <laughs> अब तो पहले एक में ऐसे हो चुकी हूँ अब तो मुझे अपना पति का भी डर रहता है कल कोस खत ऐसे कुछ ना हो जाए अब तो जो इधर मेरी बेटी हुई उसका भी मुझे डर है फिर उसके पास ऐसे साथ ऐसे कुछ ना हो जाए और बस मुझे यही डर है कि मैं वापस जाना नहीं चाहती और मेरा कोशिश यही है कि मैं अपने बच्चों को यहीं पर बुला लूँ Last October, Khadera Hashmi was shot multiple times on her way home from work in the capital of Ghazni province, south of Kabul. As she slumped over, one of the attackers grabbed her by the hair and pulled a knife and gouged out her eyes. That's why I did it, because our women are very poor. And they are very poor with them. And that's why I did it. Khatera was two months pregnant at the time of the attack. Hashmi survived the gruesome attack, as did her unborn child. They wait in anticipation of some news from home in their refugee shelter in the Indian capital. Reach was born on 21st August on board a U.S. Air Force aircraft's cargo bay. Her parents were being evacuated from Afghanistan and were on their way to Ramstein U.S. Air Base in Germany when she decided to enter the world. We were briefed as the women's health team that a baby had delivered in flight and that they were the baby was requiring our assistance. So we assembled our emergency equipment and headed out to the flight line via an ambulance. Um, once we arrived on the plane, we realized that the baby had not delivered, that the mom was still in labor um, and it was very close to delivery. So we delivered the baby safely um, and then transported her to Launchville Regional Medical Center. It, it was kind of, it was a little bit of panic. Um, it was a little bit of shock, but I was also trusting in my training and that um, I've helped deliver lots of babies. So. Hopefully this one wouldn't be any different. <laughs> Her Afghan parents decided to name their daughter Reach. They, they named the little girl Reach, and they did so because the call sign of the C-17 aircraft that flew them from Qatar to Ramstein was Reach. So that, that child's name will forever be Reach. And as you can well imagine, being an Air Force fighter pilot, it's, it's my dream to watch that young child called Reach grow up and be a U.S. citizen and fly United States Air Force fighters in our Air Force. Zarifa Ghaffari was 26 years old when she became the mayor of the capital city of Vardak province. 
This female mayor of Maidan Shahar created a record in 2018 by becoming the youngest person to hold the post. On the day Kabul was taken by the Taliban, she posted saying she will not leave her country and would rather wait for the Taliban to come and kill her. But the brave mayor had to leave Afghanistan 3 days later with family. In my country everyone is afraid of their life. They don't want to go back to 20, 2000 to 2001. No one want to have the same situation. Taliban are beating everyone, they are killing everyone, they are destroying everything. And yeah, they think everyone thinks that it's time to just leave because international community let left us at the middle of a war or at the middle of a crisis. and this is like and and this is like like a disaster that happens to my country she now struggles to piece her life together in germany after my loss of dad after my dad said i was telling everyone that it was my life's hardest moment because i lost my life's hero and i was never expecting a pain bigger than that at the moment i was heading to board the plane it was the same like it was more than that it was the pain that was i was never imagining of zarifa was a shining example of the new afghanistan that her people hoped would emerge after years of taliban rule Now the 29 year old is sitting in a German hotel after having fled her homeland along with thousands of other Afghans. I can't explain it with words. And I am not sure my tears will be able to explain it. The fear, the feeling and the pain that I have and I had at the moment. It was always so hard and it is still so hard. Can you imagine I miss my country I miss roads full of people I miss streets of noise I I I I miss everything I miss my office I miss my colleagues I miss those happy warm head who are just all around the city and who are like just there I miss everything Zarifa Ghaffari dismissed the Taliban's public reassurances on how they won't seek retribution. She wants the Taliban to open a line of dialogue if they want to prove themselves to be true to their promises. I don't see any future. But uh I can we can make a future. We can make a future just by accept the realities on ground and take it forward. I myself I call on Haibatullah the leader of Taliban I call on Mullah brother come let's talk to me sit with me and talk to me if you can if you can at least you know make me understand your words so I will go what you the way what you want me otherwise you can't govern with the 50% of population of Afghanistan For all those who couldn't leave Afghanistan she now fears they will be targeted by the Taliban In her late 30s Sahara Karimi is an Afghan film director and the first female chairperson of the Afghan film organization the first and only woman in Afghanistan with a PhD in cinema and filmmaking she had to be evacuated from Kabul after the Taliban took over Fleeing to Kyiv in Ukraine, she captured the moment of a flight taking off from Kabul airport and tweeted, "My beloved Afghanistan, my beloved city Kabul." Zara, your video went completely viral. Just tell us what was going through in your mind when you put out that video. What were you doing and uh, what was I, I the thought that was coming to your mind then? Yeah, uh, in 15 of August I was in the, like uh, I was uh, in bank and was uh, trying to get money but unfortunately we were waiting and they, we didn't get money and then manager of the bank he came to me and gunshot started like uh, outside of the building and the bank manager he came and he told me that I I need to leave I should to leave because Taliban just surrounded the 
uh, Kabul and they are entered to the town and they are very near, so you should go home because uh, everybody knows me in Kabul, uh, so I'm quite famous. So uh, for that, uh, they, she, he, he was afraid of me and he showed me the back door to, so I could go, I could go like, uh, like uh, uh, to take taxi. I couldn't take taxi, so I started to running. And uh, and in the middle of uh, running, I just decided, okay, it is not it is not fair that they are coming and they are just take over the city. So sh- the world should know about us. So I started to go live uh, on Instagram and tell people that uh, yes, this is me and this I'm running. The 38-year-old graduate of the Slovak Film and Television Academy asked the academy to help her and her family leave the country. On 15th August, as the Taliban took over Kabul, she boarded a Turkish plane and eventually arrived in Ukraine. What about us? They just come and kill us because we want to be free, because we want to be equal like any, any, any woman and children, artists, filmmakers around the world. Because we wrongly, we, we was born in Afghanistan between many, many bad neighbors and bad enemies. <laughs> we fight 20. Away from her home, Sahara See continues to fight for her soil. She appealed at the Kiev summit for first ladies and gentlemen, organized by Ukrainian first lady Olena Zelenska on the sidelines of the Crimea platform. I just want you, don't keep silent, please, please, please. And I beg you, please, tell to your husband not to give them recognition. If they give the Taliban political recognition, if they accept them, they will, they will destroy our lives, women's lives. She knows she is privileged to have been able to flee from Afghanistan, but she hasn't given up the fight you to be an Afghan. Our heart is with you and with your people. These were the voices of some very gritty, some very audacious women of Afghanistan. We're going to keep putting the spotlight on these women. For now, it's a wrap in this edition. Do stay tuned. Up next is To The Point.